this video, I'll be demonstrating how you can complete an end-to-end -end workflow in Fluent, starting from a space claim geometry file, proceeding through the setup of case settings, and ending with post-processing of the results. To begin, I've selected the watertight geometry workflow and imported my space claim geometry, which Fluent automatically displayed. Here you can see a simple manifold with three inlets and one outlet. I don't need to insert a local sizing, so I'll click Update and I'll create the surface mesh using the default values which are sufficient for this case. You can see the maximum cell size previewed in the graphics window. This mesh will contain both fluid and solid regions and I need to extract a flow volume so I'm describing the geometry as such. I've got to enclose the manifold so that I can extract the flow volume which I'll do by creating caps for all of the inlets and the outlets. With capping complete, I can update boundaries. Fluent got the boundaries correct, so I'll move on to creating fluid regions. This geometry only has one fluid region, so I'll create it. Again, the regions which Fluent automatically generated are correct, so I'll move on to adding boundary layers. The default boundary layer options are sufficient for this case, so I'm ready to move on to creating the volume mesh. Once again, the defaults are fine for this case, so I'll generate the volume mesh. Here's the mesh that Fluent generated. With a quick mesh check, I can confirm that this mesh is a good one. So I'll save it and move on to setting up my case. I'll keep the default settings of K Omega SST in the viscous model, and I'm also checking the energy box to enable heat transfer. I'll start by editing the wall material for this manifold. I'm changing the material from aluminum to cast iron as it has a higher thermal conductivity. This will allow for a better view of heat transfer effects during post-processing. I also need to set boundary conditions, which I'm grouping by type for convenience. I'll start by editing one of the inlets, which will have a velocity of 10 meters per second and the moderate turbulent intensity at the inlet. In the thermal tab, I'll set the temperature to 925 Kelvin. I'm going to use the same settings for each of the inlets, so I've copied these settings to the other inlets. At the outlet, all I want to do is ensure that I've got sensible value set in case any flow recirculation occurs during the calculation. Next, I'm going to set the wall heat transfer boundary conditions. I'll enable convection, then input my values for the heat transfer coefficient and the free stream temperature. I want all walls to have the same heat transfer boundary conditions, so I'll copy these settings to the inlet and outlet walls. Now before I begin solving, I'll create a couple of quantities that I can monitor as the calculation progresses to help me judge convergence. First I'm creating a velocity monitor on a point on the outlet. I'm also creating a custom report definition for the mass balance. Now I'm ready to start the calculation. I'll initialize the flow field using hybrid initialization which gives an initial guess of the solution. Then I'll run the simulation for up to 100 iterations or until the residuals have converged. You can see the mass imbalance being plotted and it should trend very close to zero. You can also see the point velocity gradually changing as the solution proceeds. Now I've got a converged solution, so it's time to post-process the results. I'll plot path lines showing the flow from the inlets to the outlet. These will be colored by residence time, which makes it easy to see where the flow is recirculating. I'm adding the path lines to a scene so I can include a contextual geometry on a clip surface that I created.
Next, I'll create a temperature contour to examine the temperature variations of the flow, as well as the inside of the wall. I created a surface to display a cut view of the wall, which I'm selecting here. I'll enable Draw Mesh and select another clip I created to display the surrounding mesh. Here you can see that the flow temperature is lowest at the wall. You can also see that the wall temperature rises as the flow travels through the manifold. To get a better look at the temperature variations in the wall, I'll create another contour for the wall temperature. Here you can see the temperature variation throughout the wall. This concludes this demonstration of end-to-end -end fluid flow simulation in ANSYS Fluent. Thanks for watching.